Hello, Jeannie P. Jones. Today is Jingle Bells, Batman Smells, P.S. So Dismay. We're going to be reading chapters 8 and chapter 9. Chapter 8 is called Being Shellfish. Dear First Grade Journal, I cannot believe this situation. Mother said no more money. Plus Daddy said no more money too. They said Grandpa Miller already gave me five whole dollars more. Only he was not supposed to tell them that. And so, great. Now I have stress in my head. I need an extra buck, I tell you. I really, really need an extra buck. Your friend, Junie B, first grader. I closed my journal and I looked all around. My friend Herbert was not writing in his journal. I tapped on his head. Psst, Herbert, I need a buck. I really, really need a buck. He nodded. I know, Junie B, you told me that on the bus, remember? But I don't have a buck. I really, really don't. He pulled out of his pockets to show me. Then he turned back around. I tapped on his head again. Yeah, only I don't need it now, Herb. I need it for tomorrow, I explained. And so just bring me a dollar tomorrow and I will be your bestest friend. Herb turned around again. You already are my bestest friend, he said. Plus I already told you my mother will only give me the exact amount I need for my gifts. She says every time she gives me extra money, I lose it. I rolled my eyes. Mothers, I said. They're all the same. They think children lose everything and we don't. Herb nodded. I know we don't. It's ridiculous. After that, he came back and looked at my desk. Can I borrow a pencil? I lost mine. <laughs> I gave him a pencil. Then I reached across the aisle and I tapped on Lenny. Psst, Lenny. I need an extra buck tomorrow. Can you bring an extra buck? Huh, Lenny? Please, please, please. Lenny shook his head. Sorry, Junie B, but my parents are tight wads. I've never had an extra buck in my life, he said. Jose turned around and nodded. My parents are tight wads too, he said. They are muy tacanos. That means tight wads in Spanish. Just then, Snoopy Head May reached across the row, very happy, and she poked me with her pencil. Ask me, Junie Jones, ask me, she said. My parents are tight wads. I always have extra money. She reached into her backpack. I have two whole dollars with me right now. Wanna see? She took out her shiny plastic wallet and wow, we wow, wow. There were two whole dollar, dollars folded up in there. See, said May, I told you I had money. My parents say I should always have money in case of an emergency. I sat up perky. Wow, what a coincidence, because this is an emergency, May, I said. So if you will just give me one of those dollars, that will take care of my whole entire problem. I held out my hand, but May just frowned her eyebrows. Don't be silly. This is for my emergencies, not yours, Junie Jones, she said. She started to put her wallet back. I talked my fastest. But, but, you're a giver, May. Remember that? You are a giver, and I am shellfish. May shrugged. Yeah? So? So if you give me a dollar, I will take a dollar and that will make sense for the both of us. May shook her head. No, I can't. My father says that friends should never borrow money from each other. I clapped my hands real thrilled. Then it's perfect, I said, because you and I are friends. I don't even like you, May. Plus, listen to this. I'm not even borrowing the money. You're just going to give it to me and I'm not going to pay you back. May made a mad face at me. Then she quick put her wallet away. I slumped down on my seat and I tapped my fingers on the desk. I don't get it, I said. That was the best arguing I ever thought. What went wrong there? Herb turned around. I think it might have been when you said, I don't even like you, May, part, he said. Lenny nodded. Plus the I'm not paying you back part was probably not the best way to go either. May leaned her head across the aisle. Or else maybe you were never ever getting the money in the first place, she said, real mean. Did you ever think of that, Junie Jones? I glared my eyes at her. You're gonna be sorry, I thought in my head. You're gonna be real sorry. Just then, Mr. Scary stood up at his desk and he said to put our journals away. He went to the closet and took out some white paper sacks. White paper sacks. Boys and girls, these white sacks are going to hold our secret Santa gifts. He explained, today each one of you will decorate your own sack and tomorrow your secret Santa will put your gift inside. He passed them out. Please print your name clearly on the sack, he said. Then at the end of the day, I'll arrange them on the back table and tomorrow, when we come back from the gift shop, your secret Santa will go back there and deliver your gift right to your sack. Sound like fun? Room one clapped real happy. Fun!
fun, we said. Really, really fun, said May. She jumped up from her chair. Thinking about Secret Santa Day puts me in a happy mood, she said. Even Junie Jones can't ruin my Secret Santa Day tomorrow. After that, she skipped around her desk and she sat back down again. There, I glared at her some more. Oh, yes, I can, May, I thought again. I can ruin your day, but good. I crossed my mad arms. I would think of a way, no matter what. I stay mad at May for the whole rest of the day because that meanie girl didn't even deserve a Secret Santa gift. I tell you, she didn't deserve any gift at all. I rode the bus home very grumpity. If I was the real Santa Claus, I would give May coal in her stocking, I grouched to myself. That's just what she deserves. She deserves coal. Just then I sat there very still and I did not move my muscles. My brain rewinded itself. Coal. She deserves coal, I thought it again. Chill bumps came on my arm. I sat up straighter. I am a genius, I think. I zoomed home from my bus stop as fast as a rocket. Then I ran in my front door and I ran out my back door and I stopped at Daddy's barbecue grill. The barbecue grills where Daddy cooks hamburgers and hot dogs and ha, there's a big bag of coal there. I reached in my hand and I pulled out a lump. Then I rushed to my room speedy quick and I showed the coal to Philip Johnny Bob. Coal, coal, I got coal, Phil. See it, huh? See the coal? Coal is what the real Santa Claus gives me and children, and so that is exactly what I will give May. Philip stared at it very curious. Yeah, only here's the problem. That's not actually coal, he said. That's called charcoal briquette. I did an annoying breath at him. Yes, Philip, I know it's a charcoal briquette, I said, but I saw a picture of coal before and it looks exactly like this kind of, and so May will not even know the difference. Philip looked at the coal some more. Oh, I get it, he said. The coal is to teach her a lesson, right? Right, Phil, I said. That's how come Santa brought thought of coal in the first place, to teach bad children lessons. Philip grinned. Plus, after May learns her lesson, she can grill herself a hot dog, he said. I laughed out loud at that funny guy. He is a joke a minute, I tell you. I put the coal in a little plastic baggie and I dropped it in my backpack. Ha, I said, the perfect secret Santa gift for me and May, and it didn't even cost me a single cent. I wiped the cold dirt off of my hands, and that is that. So there. Chapter nine is called The Bestest Gifts. The next morning, mother gave me a $5 bill for the gift shop. I looked at it in my hand. Big whoop, I said. I would not actually recommend saying that comment. I got marched to my room for a timeout. While I was there, I unzipped my backpack and I checked on my coal and it was still safe and sound in its plastic baggie. After that, I got the $5 Grandpa Miller gave me and I gave and I added it to mother's money and I hid all of my dollars in the bottom of my shoe. Hiding money in your shoe is a good way to keep it safe from pickpocket people. I saw that on the travel channel. But I must have done something wrong, I think, on account of my dollars got very wadded up at the end of my sock and they pressed against my little piggy toe. That's how come when I got to room one, I took off my shoe and I rubbed my toe all better. May looked over at me, she made a face and held her nose. That is disgusting, Junie Jones. She said, people should not play with their own stinky feet. I raised my eyebrows very curious. Then whose stinky feet should we play with? I asked. May put her hands over her ears. I'm not gonna listen to you today. She said, today is Secret Santa Day and I'm not going to let you ruin my happy mood. After that, she turned back around and she tapped on Lenny's head. Happy Secret Santa Day, Lenny. I can't wait for the party. Can you? Lenny started to answer, but May interrupted. I dressed in all, I dressed all in red and green today. She said, see my socks? One is red and one is green. See? Lenny stared at her feet. My grandfather does that. We make him go back and change, he said. May did a giggle, but I did it on purpose, Lenny. She said, see the ribbons in my braids? One is red and one is green, just like my socks. See, my sweater is green and my dress is red. She stood up and turned around. That's how everyone should dress on Secret Santa Day, she said. Every time I think about our party, it makes my skin prickle. Want to see? She closed her eyes for a second, then she did a little quiver. Whew, I felt it, she said. I felt my skin prickle again. Lenny stared at her. I stared at her too, because I never actually saw her happy before. You're acting like a nut, I said. How come you're acting like a nut? May started to make a mad face. Then very quick, she smiled again. Ha, see that, Junie Jones? See how fast I smile? Even if you call me names, you still can't ruin my happy mood today. 
I made the cuckoo sign at her. But May kept right on smiling. Pretty soon the bell rang to start school. Mr. Scary took attendance. Also, we did opening ceremonies. Then, hooray, hooray, he said it's time for room one to go to the gift shop. I clapped real loud at that happy news because pretty soon I would have my own squeeze a burp and that is a dream come true. I sprang out of my chair and I ran to the door. Yay, 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 I'm first in line, I'm first in line, I called real joyful. Then I jumped up and down and I twirled all around. Plus also I skipped in the to and fro. Mr. Scary said to please settle down, but my feet would not stop bouncing. That's how come Mr. Scary gave up on me and he held my hand and both of us led room one to the gift shop. I zoomed in the door as fast as I could, then ran straight to table five, but wait till you hear this. There was only one squeeze a burp left. I did a gasp at the situation and then I quick grabbed it and I hid it in my sweater and I zoomed to the gift shop lady, speedy quick. Quick, hurry, put it in a bag. I whispered, I don't want people to see me buying this or they might call me shellfish. The gift lady looked odd at me. Then I handed her the money and she put the burp in a bag and no one even saw. I hid the bag in my sweater pocket. Then I walked real calm to table one and I picked out five sets of tattoos. And guess what? Everyone in my family got their own special kind because Grandpa Miller got dinosaurs and Mother got dragons and Daddy got pirates and Ollie got kitty cats and my Grandma Helen Miller got the nice variety of swamp animals. She will love these things, I said. There's a swamp animal to match every occasion. After that, I skipped to the gift lady and I gave her the rest of my money. She put them in my same bag. I smiled when I looked in there. These are the bestest gifts I ever bought, I told her. The, lift, the gift lady nodded. Yes, she said, tattoos and a bilge. Your family will be delighted. I did a happy giggle. Then I ran to the door of the gift shop and I lined up to go back to room one. I'm all done, people. I'm all done with my shopping, I called out. May walked by me. This isn't a race, Junie Jones, she said. I made a face at her. Then I sat down on the floor and I waited and I waited and I waited. Room one is the slowest shoppers you ever saw. Then finally, Mr. Scary said it's time to go back to our room. And so everyone lined up behind me and I led them back. All of us were buzzing very much because after lunch would come the party, of course, and the party meant, ha, we get our secret Santa gifts. Mr. Scary hurried to the back of the room. Boys and girls, all of the paper stacks you decorated yesterday are lined up here on the back table, he said. When I call your name, you'll walk back here and I'll help you find the right bag, okay? And then you'll secretly drop in your secret Santa gift inside and walk back to your desk. He smiled. We don't have much time, so we've got to be orderly, he said. The rest of you will stay busy writing or drawing in your journals. And remember, no peeking. He called Lucille's name first. She skipped to the front of the room and did a twirl. This is just in case anyone missed seeing my expensive party dress today, she said. Then she skipped to the back of the room with her gift shop bag. I looked over at May. She was getting out her journal and not paying attention to me. Very sneaky. I reached my hand in my backpack and I pulled out the baggie with her coal inside. Then I bent over very secret and I dropped the coal in my gift shop bag. The plastic made a crinkle sound. May turned her head to see me. I smiled. She was too late. The coal was ready to go. And that's the end of chapter nine.